What's up, guys? My name is Marco. I'm a citizen for Trump. <laughs> yeah, Luigi, I'm back. What's up, Jesse? I think I'm having connection problems. Um, let me see. Uh, you can see me okay? Yeah, I think uh, either my my Wi-Fi is low. I, okay, I can see me now. I see me. All right, I'm back. Yay. Hola. Hola, Luigi Garcia. Brenda, what's up? Kansas here. Um, let's see, where are you guys from? Pennsylvania. Great, Pennsylvania. I want to talk a little bit about what's going on out there. Um, Uh, Michigan. Pennsylvania. Wyoming. Wow. Ohio. North Carolina. Pittsburgh. Florida. Hi, Trisha. Western Outlaw. <laughs> uh, that's a great name. North Carolina. Hola. Hola, Cristina. Louisiana. I've never been to Louisiana. What's up, Ivan? California. Well, I've been in California. My wife was born here. Um, so everybody knows I was born and raised in Mexico, right? I came here when I was 17. And I met my wife in high school. And we have been together for 26 years. Uh, we have six kids. Uh, so I love your country, guys. Uh, what's my country now? Um, it took me a long time to be one of you, to be an American. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Um, Illinois, Texas, Yolanda, what's up? Debbie, Debbie Taylor, congratulations. Yes, I became a U.S. citizen in 2003. As a matter of fact, uh, the San Francisco Chronicle is, uh, there's going to be an article about my family that's going to come out, I believe, tomorrow. And where I, what I tell them, uh, Cabrina Martin Marroquin. Your husband is from Tampico, Mexico. Yeah, Tampico, great place. You were raised in El Paso. Well, Paso is almost Mexico, huh, Jesse? <laughs> Actually, Jesse, you know what? That's where I got my, that was my entry point into the United States, El Paso, Texas. So that's why I'm always going to be grateful to El Paso because that's where I first came in into the United States. And it's an awesome feeling when they put that that stamp that you're permitted to go into the United States legally. It took a long time, guys. I was separated from my family. I was in Mexico. Um, Sheila, look forward to reading it. Well, San Francisco Chronicle, it's uh, uh, liberal. Uh, so I know they're going to try to put a lot of stuff uh, to make me look bad. Well, 
The thing is, the good goes with the bad, right, guys? And uh, I've, it hasn't been easy for me to integrate in the culture. Let's put it that way. I have worked really hard to be one of you. And that's why I'm doing all this. I'm, I'm doing this. Somebody was telling me that in, in Texas they're hiring um, activists uh, to help the GOP, that they would pay pretty good. And I told them I would do it for free. I would, I would, I would be an act activist uh, to help conservative values for free on a daily basis, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Am I not a liberal? <laughs> no, I'm not a liberal. I, 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 Teresa, I, as, um, I guess you can say I'm to the center, okay? I'm not a uh, uh, all the way to the right, but definitely with uh, six kids, uh, family values. Uh, I believe uh, an individual uh, work. I believe that you need to work for what you have, and you need to uh, be the best you can. And I believe in in giving back uh, to our community. I guess there's a few trolls here, guys. <laughs> I don't know if, who I'm talking to, okay? I wouldn't work for free, but, you know, to be honest with you, Teresa, I've been working for free because a lot of the people, I'm underemployed here in California. I'm, I'm, a, mortgage, I'm a real estate broker, and I've been working for free for a lot of people, helping them save their homes and... and uh, uh, but eventually, you know, I don't abandon my clients, just like a good lawyer doesn't abandon his clients. I'm, yes, I'm slowly moving to the, more to the right, but I'm in California, so, uh, you know, as much as I try, it, it's really hard. Uh, there is a lot of uh, things that I don't like um, here, but, you know, we're working hard. Um, you're a decent man and you became a citizen. Yeah, you know what? That's what I'm getting to here. And I'm not gonna take a lot of your time because Citizens for Trump told me that 10 minutes is a, a good life feed. So when you're born and raised in a third world country, like I was, and you come to this country, when I came to the United States and I met my, I met my wife, Jennifer, I had my first pizza with her. You know, I had my first root beer, root beer float, and, and I went to the drive-in to the movies. So for me, it was a great experience. But there are survival skills, defense mechanisms that all these people bring from third world countries. And I put an article that I wanted to talk to you guys about, and it's about the two illegals that and Rockville high, high school students that are charged with, with a rape and a, a bathroom assault. So I was reading a little bit about it, and I guess these kids, they come from uh, Guatemala and El Salvador, okay? And what I'm getting to, guys, Donald Trump's right. They're bringing crime. They're rapists, and some I assume they're good people. He wasn't too far off from that. I blame the school for, um, for allowing these kids, for allowing these two adults to go into this high school. But, but I don't blame the school either, because a lot of these people that come here they have no documentation. So the school, Rockville High School, when they took them in, how do you know how old these kids are? Unless they tell you how old they are, you, you, there's no way to prove. Just like Donald Trump said, there is, there is no way to properly document these immigrants if they do not come here legally. 
Because when somebody comes here legally, there is a process. There is a lengthy, painstaking pro uh, process. And how to determine who you are. There's a psychological, medical, and mental, there's an evaluation to determine whether this person, this newcomer to this USA society is a person that will conform to our principles and that will follow our law. Okay, so what I'm getting to here, these kids, they have major psychological trauma that they're running away from. Back in their country, they're at war. They, they live in extreme poverty. And they live in very unsafe environment. So the way... What's up, Tim? <laughs> Great to see you, man. <laughs> uh, so these kids, they come from these environments, and they have their defense. They have really bad habits, guys. And some of this crap is generational. You know, guilty myself. I mean, I, I'm not telling you I'm a rapist, but I have definitely that third world mentality is in the back of my mind. And I have to work on it every day very hard. But you know why I have left my country? A lot of people are here physically, but mentally they're not here. And I think the big problem here is the sanctuary city status. Don't, don't quote me on this, but I believe that this, uh, I read a little bit of it, that this city had became a sanctuary city. Now, I want to apologize to Harim in L.A. because we went to a Sanctuary City hearing uh, last week on Tuesday. And I was a little soft. When they came for me, my time to speak on the microphone before the city council, I was a little soft on the Sanctuary City. Because there was like 90% of them were liberals. And I tried, I tried to be diplomatic. But I'm taking that back. There is no way to negotiate with evil. A lot of these kids, they're bringing that evil here, guys. So there is no way to negotiate. These sanctuary cities, they need to be taking the federal funds away so that they line up and they conform. Because this is what's coming to a town near you. And I was talking to my friend who, uh, Paloma, uh, I tagged her on this one. I know she's driving from Mexico. She actually lives in Mexico, but she went to high school in Pennsylvania. So she still has friends around that area, Pennsylvania, Maryland. And she was telling me, that those areas have become, there is no go zones for a lot of us. Because there is so much MS-13, which is the Salvadorian uh, mafia. So, guys, we have a problem. And I want to talk to you about that problem because if you can share this video and if you can share the article and if we can talk about it because the mainstream media is not going to talk about it. They're just going to wishy-wash it a little bit and, and, but they're not going to go to the core of this problem. And the problem is, I have a 15-year-old daughter, guys. Okay? And I don't want this to happen to her. Yeah, and that's another problem. The Muslim thing, guys, 
if this is a problem, the Muslim think it's a huge problem. I went to this uh, meeting where they were talking about ISIS and Muslim, the Muslim Brotherhood. And the Muslim Brotherhood, it, it's kind of like, did you guys watch Star Trek and, and the Borg? You know, the Borg, it's this uh, society that just assimilates everybody. And if you don't assimilate, they'll kill you. And they say that resistance is futile. Well, that's the, that's the mentality of the Muslims. They say that resistance is futile. These guys, they come in, they infiltrate. They put their mosques. And the problem... The problem with the, the mosques and, and the Muslim Brotherhood is this. That they don't, they don't have the separation of the church like we do. Right? You go to church, you don't talk about political or legal matters at the church. Because it's separated. Well, these mosques, they don't have a separation of legal, political, and church. But you know what I learned? And this you can quote me on, you can make a note on this. Only 14% of the in, uh, indoctrination at a mosque deals with the religious aspect of their message. And the rest is political. It's legal, and it's 51%. It's about how to indoctrinate, how to conquer, and how to kill the infidel. And they have the house of Mos the house of Islam. So there's there's their mythology is that this, there's two houses. There's the house of Islam, and there's the house of infidels. The house of war and the house of Islam. Yeah. So there is the house of Islam where, where the cool stuff is. And then there's the house of war. Well, we are the house of war in their indoctrination. So there is no negotiations with these people, guys. And I can see what's going on. So, Teresa, you're a troll, huh, Teresa? I am a Catholic. I am a, a uh, Sunday Catholic. <laughs> but also, Teresa, so that you understand a little bit who I am, I am a 12-step uh, guru. So I've been in a 12-step program for about 10 years. So... Uh, if you don't know what step 12 step is, go check it out. And that'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, yeah, the Sharia law in America. Yeah, because see, these guys, their, their indoctrination count is a whole package. There's no separation of religion. And, 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 and I guess that's kind of like in the old days for us with Catholics, right? With the Inquisition kind of days. Yes, very humbly, a guru. <laughs> yeah, ban Sharia law. There is just no room for Sharia law, guys. It's either that. I mean, if we give room to Sharia law, we're dead. We are dead because these guys have books and how to deceive. They have a whole book. Uh, um, I got all my notes somewhere here, but... They have a whole book in how to deceive you so that you think that they are a moderate uh, Muslim. But there's no such thing. It's only the house of Islam and the house of war. So you aren't either. You either dress like they dress and act like Muhammad or you die. <laughs> so check guys we need to uh, and the thing is that this is all happening here already uh, I, I saw 
Look, I'm in a very liberal state. Uh, when they build these churches, the, the permits they get is for a small church. Okay? But when they form these churches, then all the time there's a lot of people. And there's one here in Brentwood. Uh, there's one in Antioch. Uh, these guys are a slow, a killer in slow motion. They're going to become your neighbors. They're going to they're gonna become your teachers. They're going to become... Um, your city uh, government officials and soon you're going to see what's what's up and i think that's happening around the, the united states already um yeah yeah michelle conform or die basically that's what it is it's I, i'm thinking it's kind of like the board in, in, in uh, star trek if you're as old as i am and watch star trek there is it's resistance is futile you either convert to Islam or you're dead. And see, I have never talked about Muslims and Islams because we Hispanics, we don't really don't get into that stuff a lot. But what I know is that a lot of these guys, they like uh, Hispanic women. So what they're doing is they're marrying our, our, our women because they like Hispanic women because they cook. Um, and they're submissive. So a, a lot of uh, Middle Eastern people are marrying our women. And because they, they buy um, stores and then they sell Mexican products. Go to, go to Mexican uh, markets. And a lot of the owners of the Mexican markets are not Mexican owners anymore. They are Middle Eastern Muslim people that own those uh, stores. They're, they're very smart. They know how to get into our system. They know how to get money. They know how to uh, play the game. Yeah, yeah. You, I'm in real estate. I knew this, this, this guy that was on Section 8. Uh, this family was on Section 8. They, they bought a house in the brother's name and they would make they would make the mortgage payment with a section 8 check that would get every month so the, in essence they were having our government pay for their mortgage because they know how to play the system you and me we, we wouldn't do that crap because that's that's crazy <laughs> so guys, I don't want to take a lot of your time. I didn't want to talk about uh, Muslims really, but it, it seems like that's at the end of the day, that's really our, our, our fight. But below that fight is this crazy stuff, which is already going to school with your kids. So we have people, again, from third world countries that bring issues, that have lots of problems. They're bringing crime, they're bringing rape. And some are good people, I assume. Well, these people, these immigrants that Obama invited to our country are raping our daughters and our sisters. And they want to protect themselves with sanctuary cities. So I guess that is my conclusion of the day. Again, they're bringing crime, they're bringing rape, and they're protecting themselves with sanctuary city status. And I didn't want to talk about that one, but DACA. So a lot of these kids are the kids that are applying for DACA. And that's going to be Donald Trump's new fight when he goes and talks about DACA. But this is not looking very well. It's not looking good. And at the end of the day, they need your approval. They need my approval for these people to be in our country. And I don't think we're safe from a lot of these people, guys. Unless there's extreme betting, an extreme betting process, take it from somebody that went through the path for citizenship like I did. 
There is no way you're going to know who somebody is unless you put him, put him on a five-year uh, resident status like they did to me. And then you will know the character of this person. These kids have been here for eight. One has been here for eight months. Another one, seven months. Very extreme betting, yes. Look, guilty myself. You know, you have to put somebody on a five-year... That's why you go get a, a, a job. They ask you, what do you want to do in five years? Because you have to show... One thing is to talk the talk, another thing is to walk the walk. In my Twitter account, I have something that's called knowledge of the path is not a substitute for walking it. We can talk about it all day long. These people can tell you, oh yes, we want to be, we want to be one of you. We want to, you to give me legal status. Okay, so show me why. Why should I give you legal, legal status? So you come and rape our daughters? And our, our sisters. Think about it, guys. I love you. Thank you. Talk to you soon. One okay. All illegals should be thrown out and come back. The thing is that they need to understand that they're not in Kansas anymore, guys. Basically, that's what it comes down to. It's a, a new opportunity. You gave me an opportunity to be one of you, and I showed you with my behavior that I was, I was willing, able, and ready to be one of you, and I became a U.S. citizen. Some people are not willing to pay the price, guys. And the sooner you realize that that's the case, the better it's going to be for all of us. Talk to you soon.